Hey guys, it's Adrian over BHA here. Bear with me because I'm a little bit under the weather, so if you can tell it in my voice, uh, not doing too good. But uh, this week I wanted to do a video on round two, I guess, of the Zimmy Smart Smart Desk Lamp, whatever you want to call it. It's very nice of them to send me this equipment for me to review and everything um, and be able to show it to you guys. Uh, I think it works out great. A couple months back, they sent me two of these. Uh, last month, we did uh, the first video on, on one of the desk lamps. And so now we are ready for round two. This is the second lamp they sent me. Not a whole lot different overall. Obviously, it looks a little bit different uh, than the one we did last month. Uh, for the most part, the controls are about the same. So I have a feeling that this video will be pretty similar to uh, last month's video. But we'll check it out and see. As it is most of the time, this uh, lamp is also available on Amazon's website. So if you don't want to get it uh, from Zimmy Smart directly, you can buy it from Amazon. Price is pretty similar on both of them. It's around $45, $46. Not too bad. Uh, I guess it just depends on how much you want to spend on a desk lamp. So let's do a quick run through of everything we're going to cover in this video. Uh, for starters, as we usually do, we will unbox the device. Uh, once we do that, we are going to uh, attempt to connect it to the Tuya app. It should go pretty smoothly. Uh, once we do that and kind of play around with it for a little bit, then we'll go ahead and flash it with Tasmoda firmware. Once we get it flashed, then of course we'll have to do some configuration and everything for it to work properly uh, with Tasmoda. And once we do all that, we're going to add it into Home Assistant. And then, of course, lastly, I'll show you what that looks like in action. So let's get started. All right, so here's the box. Uh, pretty plain for the most part. It does uh, have the uh, drawing of the uh, lamp on the front of the box. That's pretty much about it there. There's some specifications for you. Uh, input voltage is uh, 12 volts. Maximum power is 6 watts. All right, so inside it comes with uh, instructions, of course, on how to get it added into the Tuya app. Uh, this little box here is the uh, power supply. And then, of course, you get the base uh, with the uh, lamp. Looks like you even have to uh, kind of screw it together and everything. So we actually have to do a little bit more on putting this one together than we have on some of the other ones. All right, so here we have it put together and it is uh, powered on. As you can see, it's got the little touch controls down here. There's a power button, uh, brightness level. And I think if you hold the power button down, it will change uh, between uh, cool and warm. It does also have a USB port on the back, uh, which is uh, similar to the other lamp as well. And of course, it has a little blue light indicator there on the far side that will uh, show you if it's connected or not to the uh, Wi-Fi. Let's move on to the next step. All right, so adding it to two, you should be pretty simple. We'll just do an auto scan here in the Tuya app, and it should pretty much automatically find uh, the lamp. Again, on this lamp, uh, right out of the box, it should be in um, you know pairing mode. If it's not, uh, on the back of the lamp where that little blue uh, indicator light is, there's also a little reset hole that you can uh, you put a little pin in there, uh, put push the little button in there and it of course uh, will reset the device and allow it to go into uh, pairing or flashing mode. 
Let's go ahead and give it a different name. This one's going to go in my son's room, so we'll call it Caden's Lamp. Added successfully. All right, so let's check this thing out. So uh, we can turn it on and off. We can uh, change the uh, brightness. We can even change from uh, cool to warm. So I'd say uh, this lamp works pretty good with the Tuya app. So if you're good with that and fine with using the uh, Tuya Cloud app, then uh, that's all you got to do. You can add this into Home Assistant using uh, the Tuya component in Home Assistant, and you're good to go. If you want to bring it out of the cloud, then, of course, uh, continue with this video, and we'll see if we can't get this thing added in Tasmoda. All right, so as always, in order to uh, flash with our Tasmoda firmware, we'll use our uh, Raspberry Pi here that we will have uh, Tuya Convert installed on it. So in the Tuya Convert directory on our Raspberry Pi, we'll do a start underscore flash dot sh and of course you'll follow through the steps here type yes hit enter it'll want you to add your phone or other device to the vtrust dash flash ssid and of course if you haven't done that before then it has the password there for you as well and then that should kick it off and then of course it'll take just a few seconds for the thing to start getting added And as you can see here, uh, it's rolling through pretty quickly. I've kind of fast forwarded it, so uh, not taking up too much extra time. All right, so it flashed and everything went well. We're just going to copy this last line down here at the bottom and paste it in there. That should be the final step that we need to get this thing uh, up and going with Tasmoda firmware. We're ready to move on to that next step. All right, now once you have your device uh, configured on your home Wi-Fi network, then we just need to go through some configuration steps to get it functioning properly with uh, Tasmoda. So of course this uses the Tuya MCU, so we're going to change the module type here to uh, Tuya MCU number 54. Go ahead and let that restart. All right, so we don't have our, uh, our slider bar yet for the uh, brightness, but let's go ahead and jump back over to the module type just to make sure that the settings look right. That should be good, button 117. As long as uh, the TX and RX are set properly, that's all we really need. All right, so let's jump over to the console here. We're going to go ahead and set web log to 4 so that we get all the additional uh, logs and stuff in the console. And then from here, we're going to do a 2 MCU 21 comma three and this should allow us to then control the brightness uh, with the slider bar now we need to set the dimmer range now for the most part since i'm going off the same specs as the previous lamp that we did we're going to start by just saying dimmer range zero comma 255 if that doesn't look right or we feel like that's not functioning the way we should then we may have to make some alter alterations here but let's go ahead and check that out Here's our slider bar. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and restart uh, just to make sure that it picked up all those changes. All right, so we're back up. The only last thing we need to do in our configuration is to con make sure our MQTT is configured so that we can get it added to Home Assistant. So 
of course, I'll put in the uh, name of my MQTT broker. Go ahead and, and uh, make any other changes I want to make to this. Uh, put in my username and password for the MQTT broker. Once we have everything set the way we want it, we can go ahead and save it. And we should be good to go. Let's move on to that next step. All right, now since we, uh, at least as of recently, have been using the uh, MQTT integration and in Home Assistant, uh, we are enabling auto discovery so that it will automatically pick up this device uh, in Home Assistant without us having to go in and uh, make any changes in our configuration. So we're gonna do a set option 19 space one that will enable the auto discovery for us. And then now if we jump back over to the web interface and home assistant and go to our MQTT uh, integration, we should be able to look down and find the, uh, let's see, the uh, lamp that was already added. And there it is down at the bottom. We didn't change the name in the uh, network settings. So of course it still comes up as sawn off. That's okay, we can change it here. So we can just go in, we'll go ahead and call it Cadence Lamp because that's what we called it everywhere else. And of course it updates everything else in the settings as well. So that's it, it is added into Home Assistant. We are uh, uh, good to go, uh, went pretty smoothly. Like I said, that auto discovery is awesome because almost before I can jump over to uh, to Home Assistant and the web interface, it's already added in there and everything, so it works great. So let's go uh, on to that last step and see it in action. So here we have the uh, Home Assistant uh, tab that's got all the, got the light on it and everything, and of course, as you can see here, here's the lamp. And if we turn this thing on, uh, it comes right up. You're able to change the brightness. Uh, one thing that was different on this lamp that I noticed is that this one does not actually have a uh, indicator to show you what level of brightness it is on the lamp. Now, if you remember the other lamp, uh, depending on where you set it on the lamp itself, it would actually light up that section to show you that that's how bright it is. Uh, so I kind of like that on the other lamp overall better than this one because that made it a pretty nice feature. The lamps are pretty similar. This one, uh, of course, just has the uh, long neck, and then you can kind of angle it however you want. The other one was, uh, you know, allowed you to move it around uh, and everything. I think that one overall is probably a uh, better uh, setup than this lamp. But overall, I think it just depends on which one you like better. All right, well, that's the end of the video, guys. Uh, it went uh, pretty much the same as the last video. Um, the setup was almost identical. Unfortunately, as you probably recall, and as you probably noticed, we're only able to currently change the brightness or the uh, color temperature in uh, Home Assistant or even in Tasmoda right now, you can't do both. But we do have the ticket open uh, on the uh, GitHub page and they are throwing out some ideas that should possibly work. Um, I am not exactly sure how to set that up yet, so I'm waiting to kind of get some more feedback on that but hopefully I'll have some more information on that before too long. But nonetheless, let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video. So of course, for starters, we unboxed the device. Uh, once we did that, we added it into the, uh, the Tuya app just to show you how that worked. Uh, after that, we went ahead and attempted to flash it with Tasmoda firmware, which went well, and then we were able to configure it in Tasmoda once that was done, then we went ahead and added it into Home Assistant. And lastly, I showed you what that looked like in action. That's the end of the video, guys. Again, uh, I apologize for the uh, kind of raspy voice. Uh, I'm a little bit under the weather, but uh, hopefully I wasn't uh, too hard to understand. If you liked the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. As always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, 
let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.